Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and have watched the previous video in which I started the discussion on automated lines and specifically focused on one type of them that is the production line. Continuing the discussion, in this video I will focus on the other type of production line that is the assembly line. Both production and assembly lines are quite similar with the exception that on production lines a manufacturing process is performed on the work part. Hence, a machine tool is essentially installed at the workstation. Whereas, on an assembly line, only assembly of new parts onto the base part is done. This means the workstation on an assembly line should have a supply of base part from the work transport system and a supply of new component from some other means so that it can be assembled with the incoming base part. This is the major difference between the production line and an assembly line. So system configuration, work transport system and controllers are same for both kind of lines. Assembly lines require what is called part feeding mechanism that will provide new components so that they can be installed or assembled with the incoming base part. These schematics show various system configurations that are used for assembly lines. Note the presence of part feeding mechanism present on one side of the workstation and the base work unit present on the other side. Typically, every workstation will add one component to the base work part and so as the work part reach the last station, all required parts have been assembled onto the base part to get the final product. Rarely, more sophisticated, complex and expensive assembly machines take in multiple components from the feeding mechanism and add them on the base part at one station, saving time and space of the factory floor. Let's talk a bit about the distinguishing component of the assembly line, that is the part feeding mechanism. The assembly machine will receive the component from the part feeding mechanism, place it on the base part at the desired position and join or assemble it permanently using suitable method. For the task of providing components to the assembly machine, depending on the product type, different feeding mechanisms are used. However, most of them have certain major sub-mechanisms. A typical part feeder mechanism will have a hopper that will contain the parts to be delivered to the assembly machine. Parts are loaded into the hopper by throwing parts into its container. Therefore, parts are haphazardly placed in the hopper. The next sub-mechanism is called part feeder, whose job is to remove a part, no matter in what orientation the part is, from the hopper, reorient it properly, and feed it to the assembly machine. Now, of course, the part feeder would require a number of sub-mechanisms itself to make sure the parts that are being supplied to the assembly machine are properly oriented. In the image shown, the central area is the hopper that contains parts. This particular hopper is of a vibrating feed mechanism. Hence, the hopper drum vibrates and rotates at the same time. This action makes the part move towards the outer channel, which contain further arrangement to properly align or orient the part. The selectors and orienters are responsible for selecting the correctly oriented parts or if possible, orient the incoming part into desired orientation. Sometimes only selector is used to select the correctly oriented parts and reject incorrectly oriented parts back into the hopper. However, the orienter accept parts in different orientations and orient them properly before sending them further. This schematic shows one kind of a selector for bottle caps. At the input side of the selector, all stacked or upright standing bottle caps will be rejected back to the hopper by a viper blade. Any cap that passes the first stage would be either facing upwards or downwards. The next portion contains a cutout so that if the bottle cap is facing downwards, it will fall back into the hopper. And hence only bottle caps facing upwards are allowed to move to the next sub mechanism. On the other hand, this orienter will orient the wrongly oriented parts as shown in this schematic. A viper blade may be installed at the beginning to reject standing parts, whereas the rail will orient the part correctly if required. After correct orientation has been achieved, the parts are stacked in the track called feed track. The feed track acts as a buffer for the assembly head. 
In other words, you can call it a magazine that contains correctly oriented parts ready to be used by the assembly head for assembly purpose. Two types of feed tracks that are commonly implemented are the gravity type and powered type. The name suggests how the feed track will move the part to the assembly head. I'll explain these types in a moment. At the end of the feed track, the last mechanism of the part feeding mechanism is called escapement or placement device. If the part escapes the feeding mechanism just because of the push from either gravity or powered feed track, then this is called escapement procedure. Whereas if a special picking device is used to pick the part from the feed track and place it under the assembly head or fixture for further routing, then this is called placement device. Whether escapement procedure is used or placement device is used, the part is moved from the feed track in a precise timely manner so that it remains synchronous with subsequent processing. Let's examine few examples of feed track and part removal mechanisms. This schematic shows a rotary indexing table having nests for work parts. The feed track is powered in this case that pushes part towards the rotary indexing table and whenever a nest comes in front of the part, the part escapes into it. This schematic over here shows another setup of powered feed track and escapement. In this case, the timely movement of the part in the feed track ensures that the part falls in the desired fixture. The schematic shown over here is a cross-sectional view of a rotary indexing table being fed through a gravity-assisted feed track. The part falls into the cavity or the nest whenever an empty space comes underneath the feed track. These two schematics show an arrangement utilizing placement devices that picks up the part from the feed track and place it on the work carrying fixtures. Placement devices are fast moving robotic manipulator like devices that work in synchronization to work carrying system. The schematic over here shows the overall view of the feeding mechanism supplying parts to the assembly work head. Over here each sub mechanism is shown. The hopper feeds part to the selector and orienter that will allow only correctly oriented parts to go to the feed track and reject the incorrectly oriented parts back into the hopper. The feed track will act as a buffer on whose end the escapement or placement device will remove the part from the feed track and place it on the work carrier. The assembly head will then pick the part from the carrier and use it as required. The table lists typical parts that are normally produced on automated assembly lines. Note that these are only representative examples. Learners should find out any product not listed in this table that is manufactured on an assembly line and write it in the comments below. The second table over here lists typical assembly processes that are used to assemble products on assembly lines. Generally, an assembled product has components assembled through a number of assembly operations. That is, a single product might have some parts that are welded together, some mechanically fastened parts, and other joined through adhesives. With this, dear learners, I would like to end the discussion of automated lines with the hope that you have understood the difference and major components of automated production lines and assembly lines. Thank you and take care.